Let me know when y'all are up. Hey, good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, it's been a long night. So um, again, I just want to reiterate, we are here to address tonight's uh, situation. All questions about the incident from last night, again, direct those to the state police. They are in charge of that investigation, and they are the ones who can provide you information. I'd like to introduce Mayor President Josh Guillory. All right, thank you. And thank you guys for joining us tonight. I know it's been a long day as Jamie said and very late day um, I'll start off with saying this we here in Lafayette we appreciate the rights that we have in this country one of those rights is the right to peacefully assemble the right to peacefully protest guaranteed to us by the First Amendment of the United States Constitution many many Americans died for that right many people here put the badge on and protect that right every single day and we appreciate that but let me also be clear we are a peaceful community and we will and we will give up not a single inch of the city of Lafayette or the parish of Lafayette we're different this isn't Seattle this isn't other cities across the country we respect the rule of law and we are a safe and peaceful community so we have several gentlemen that can talk about the response and talk about the situation from today. Uh, the first I'll call up is Chief Morgan. Good evening. <clears throat> Chief Scott Morgan, Lafayette Police Department. <clears throat> first I'd like to say I know there is a distinction between those who organized this event at first and those who chose to be malicious uh, after the event uh, or after the speeches, the, the heartfelt speeches that were meant for tonight's uh, protest, if, if you want to call it that. I would say shame on those who took the opportunity to choose what our good citizens, an opportunity that our good citizens chose to say what they were feeling about this incident and to do something later on in the evening that was just not acceptable. This is our town, this is our community. Our community is made up of uh, a multitude of people, including older people. And this area around the throughway is filled with those older people. One of the reasons we become law enforcement officers is to see our citizens protected. And tonight, other people took advantage of that opportunity. We had to respond, and again, I will say that there is a difference between those who started the organ uh, or organized the initial event uh, that went very well, I thought, and then later on in the afternoon, as that portion of it ended, whether it be uh, people who were not originally a part of it or chose to just do what they did, we had to respond to several people blocking the roadways, the evangelism throughway, uh, and as nightfall. Uh, came we've even had people start fires uh, in our grass area the media area and uh, as well as causing a disruption around the Mall Street precinct 4 area uh, and some of that included some uh, other fires um, we are very thankful that we have agencies around us Lafayette Sheriff's Department and the Louisiana State Police we have the personnel and we have those other agencies there at our disposal and like the mayor said, our intent is not going to be to just let people disrupt our town and put our, our citizens and our motorists and our uh, neighborhood in danger. We're going to use those resources that we have and those other agencies, and we're going to enforce these laws. Um, I'll turn it over here to uh, the sheriff in just a moment if y'all have any questions of me right now. Were you guys expecting to have to use any force at tonight's protest? That is something that is dictated by the, the circumstance, the individual circumstance. We always plan, but not necessarily expect. You know, truly and honestly, in my heart, I expected our town, and we said it so many times, 
that we know with these organizers, they have, they're doing this for the right reasons because they truly and honestly believe in that. And I truly and honestly believe that Lafayette would be an example of how to do a peaceful protest. And I still think it is. I just don't think that those people that did what they did afterwards, they're the ones that are wrong. And there's the one, they're the ones that we would ask our leaders to condemn that type of behavior. Can you speak a little bit more about the behavior um, that y'all are condemning? Uh, kind of what we saw tonight. I, I could tell you some of the things that I saw, people shooting fireworks at our buildings, uh, attempts at arson, those are the main things. But to disrupt traffic, to hit on cars, to provoke motorists, those type of things strike fear in people. That, that it, it, it's not something that, as you, could you imagine being a motorist on a roadway that you're driving and had no knowledge that this was gonna happen and all of a sudden you're, you're, you have a wall of people and you can't get out of there, you can't, you can't defend yourself, and you don't know what's going to happen. That is not the behavior. That's not the type of thing that we should be doing to our neighbors, our brothers and sisters. I don't care where you're at. Uh, a couple of people were taken into custody at Moss Street. Are we able to say anything about how many people have been arrested tonight uh, across the city in, in, these, in, in this context? I can tell you some arrests were made. I can't tell you exactly how many. That's something we will get afterwards in the debrief. What, are you, what will you be charging them with? I don't, I don't, I won't know until I get the debrief exactly what George. You can imagine there would be a, a, a variety of things that could have, have occurred. It could be anything from assaults, uh, attempted arson. We just, I just don't know exactly what the charges are. Uh, any injuries or any, uh, we saw an ambulance load what uh, looked like someone onto a stretcher and take them away. Were there any injuries tonight? We know about? I didn't hear of any, but that doesn't mean uh, something may not have occurred again until I get those debriefings later on tonight. Do you guys happen to know what was on fire on that highway area? There was a bunch of things on fire kind of spread I'll, I'll defer to the, to the fire chief to give you at more accurate, uh, but uh, some of the other things we've seen people set some, whatever it may be, uh, boxes or, or what have you on fire in the roadways. I'm not sure it would be most appropriate to speak to this you or Sheriff Garber, but can you all talk a little bit about um, what kind of force was used by law enforcement tonight? Um, like what was de like deployed into the crowd, stuff like that? Uh, I, I don't, I want you to, again, that will be more something for a debrief. I can tell you as far as we have a field force team and we have law enforcement team. With the Sheriff's Department and us, we will go out initially and try to remove the crowd with regular uniform officers. If they fail to comply with that, then we, we will have our next step, which is our field force officer. And there's nothing much different than that other than the officer has more protection. Can you talk about the decision on y'all's part to kind of block off the intersection so that protesters could gather on the throughway? And it's not necessarily that we, we initially do that. That's one of the things we expect uh, when we have these type of things. We are, just in case it does happen, we are able to have that in place. Uh, but it's more so to protect them from getting hit by cars that are, uh, don't know that this is even happening uh, until we can get it under control. Just I guess not. more so, uh, like, well, why was the decision not to approach the protesters at earlier in the evening? You know, the police were kind of down the road, stay, keeping their distance, not engaging, letting things kind of happen. Um, and then there was a higher level of engagement when we got to, say, Moss Street. Kind of, what was the decision-making process there? That, that is part of, part of a natural progression. Um, if you can imagine, once we block off road, we have to set up a couple of other things and then we set our forces and then we can come in and uh, give people a little bit of time to move off on their own, uh, but you give time to develop. We talk about de-escalation, those are one of the de-escalation tools that we have is to, is to let them get it out of their system. Um, hopefully most people will move on their own and then we do a progression, up a progression. Chair. Thank you, Chief. Um, First thing I want to I want to start off and uh, thank the mayor president for his leadership uh, through this, uh, and also uh, Chief Morgan uh, for the, the the coordination and the leadership and the uh, the, the interactiveness between all the departments, uh, the sheriff's office and the state police and the Lafayette police uh, really worked well together to prepare and execute this on very short notice. Um, to to kind of tie into what the chief was talking about, um, it was a the the protest didn't start uh, damaging property and didn't start uh, criminal activity besides blocking the roadway. And make no mistake about it, blocking a roadway, a state highway, is criminal activity. 
um, it was decided uh, by myself and others in charge that we would not uh, go and attempt to deter that because we had a way to keep it safe and we do support people's First Amendment rights. However, um, when it comes to the destruction of property, we are not going to have Lafayette set on fire. I've been contacted throughout the day by numerous business owners who are very concerned about the images that they've seen in other jurisdictions where protesting has gone on. I'd say that they're rightfully concerned because of what they've seen. They've seen businesses going up in flames. They've, they've seen and, and heard calls from business owners where the police didn't show up in their stores and businesses and their stocks of wine and cash and whatnot and, and, and inventory were looted, sometimes even twice. We are unwilling to concede that that will happen in Lafayette Parish. We are unwilling to allow that to happen. So if, if any out-of-town agitators are watching this, if anyone's planning to enhance their, their techniques tomorrow or the next day, uh, we are ready for you. We are prepared. We will not willingly give up this city. You will have to go through every resource that I have and every resource that the police have in order to do harm to the citizens or to their property. Be happy to take any questions. Um, would you say that the officers involved in the shooting acted according to the, the, the laws and the training of the Lafayette Police Department? It wouldn't be appropriate for me to comment. Uh, I wasn't there at the shooting, but I, I appreciate your question. Is there, you know, you mentioned that you've had outreach from businesses, other community members. Is there any kind of anticipation of what y'all are thinking you'll see in the next few days? I have a lot of theories on it, you know, and, and these things are like a, a living, breathing thing. You're, you're dealing with a group of human beings and, uh, you know, no plan survives first contact. There's, there's an old military adage. So, you know, th these things have a life of their own. I'm talking about protest. Uh, my main goal, the, the goal of my deputies, the goal of the officers is to protect the rights of those expressing themselves right up until it becomes criminal activity. Uh, and, and then we shift into a different mode. We have to. Uh, it gives us no choice. We're in a reactionary posture most of the time uh, in, in order to do this because we're not, we're not controlling what is going on. Uh, I, I do want to say that uh, the local chapters, uh, the, the NAACP, the organizers of, of this event, um, worked very well with us and they did their best to conduct a peaceful protest and I thank them uh, and applaud them for that. They did their very, very best and uh, just like the, the chief and the mayor president said, uh, I share their opinion that uh, this is not a fault of, of, of any of them, and this is not anything that they intended. Okay. Thank you, Sheriff. Also at this time, I'd like to call up our fire chief, Chief Robert Benoit. Good evening, everyone. First of all, I just want to say condolences to the family. We know that's a loss, and we feel the pain of that family. Uh, as, a city, as a citizen in this community, and as a leader in this community, I've been in this community all my life. Lafayette, as I always stated, is a great place to live, work, and uh, entertain yourself. And one of the things that I'd like to stress to the community is that you did an outstanding job for the ones who were civil, who came for a peaceful protest. And you have the right to have a peaceful protest. But one of the things that you don't have the right to do is to burn your city down. You know, and one of the things that I'm imploring to you th tonight, as, as, as people who live in this community, this is your city. You live here. This is where you enjoy yourself and you enjoy your families. So I'm hoping that if you continue to protest that you don't burn the city down. The firefighters are out there to protect you, to save life and property. And they're scared as well as everybody else is scared because they don't want you throwing bricks at them. They don't want you setting anything on fire. They want to go home to their families the same way you go home to your family. So as the chief and the leader in the community, I am asking you, do your, your protest peacefully, but don't burn down your city. One of the things we have to contend with right now is that we're preparing for two storms that may come this way. So what happens when those two storms come this way? If first responders are not ready to do the job of protecting you and getting you out of harm's way, what's going to happen? And if the firefighters are not ready to be able to go out there in these trucks and extinguish those fires when the wind's blowing, when the rain's coming down and th things are falling apart, what's going to happen to this city? So I'm telling you tonight and asking you tonight as a leader who lives here, who's always lived here all my life and who's not trying to leave here, that this is our city. Let's protect our city, let's protect our first responders, and let's do the right thing and let the courts handle whatever they have to handle. Thank you. 
Um, we saw multiple things on fire on that three-way. How many minor fires did you guys have and what were they? Thank God they were minor fires. People started setting fires in the median uh, between the two, two roads and we were able to put them out even though we needed to use law enforcement to get us and maneuvers through there. One of the things that that's unfortunate is people were shooting rockets and fireworks and all those things. Those things go up, they got to come down and they're gonna come down on somebody's property. And so we're hoping that you do the right thing with that. But for the, for the fires, there were small fires, and thank God for that, and we're hoping that we don't have any more fires. One other thing I wanna say, too, is that there were some rumors about us throwing water on people, and we weren't throwing water on anybody. As firefighters, we're there to save life and property, but we also have to protect ourselves as well as everybody else that comes into that particular environment. Were there fires anywhere else besides the media? Um, there were a couple of fires uh, in other areas, but I don't have that, that information right now to give you the details on that. Thank you. Thank you, Chief Benoit. So if you're watching at home right now, I know there's many people that are, that are kind of concerned and, and quite frankly scared at, at some point and some time. I hope what you're looking at is you're rec and recognizing that here locally, we do have everything under control. Very thankful to our sheriff, our chief uh, law enforcement officer, our parish, our chief of police. Thankful to Chief Benoit and our fire department for all the hard work that you guys do. And again, I want to reiterate, we will not put up with terrorism. We will not give up a single inch of this city or of this parish. And we're also joined by Parish Councilman A.B. Rubin. Uh, Rubin, it's an honor to serve with this gentleman, and I, I think you have a few words. Thank you. Thank you for allowing me to come up here and speak. <clears throat> I, too, like the chief. I'm from this community, and I'm for this community. I've always been, and I always will. I started out with this protest with the organizers since earlier this afternoon. And I can tell you, by, I can speak for them right now that by no means were they a part of what went on this evening. Their intentions today was to let the community know that they're expecting transparency from the police department, the state troopers, and everyone else that is involved. That was the purpose of it, to bring unity within our community to let them know that we're standing strong to make sure that answers, questions are answered. I can tell you, in my opinion, I got up my, my bed when I saw the tear gas and I thought that that was pretty rough. And at the time, they warned them and they had to move. So I got up and I went to that particular spot because I wanted to help them out so that way no one would get hurt. And when I got there, I asked a few people to get up out the street, but the majority of the people that I saw there, I didn't recognize. So I'm gonna say that everyone that's out there doing the things that's going on, it's not from here because I'm from here. And if I don't know you, nine times out of 10, you're not from here. Lafayette, it's a peaceful and strong community. When things come upon Lafayette, we come together in strength and we back each other up. We don't do some of the things that went on tonight. That's not Lafayette. That's not who we are. So I'm gonna ask everyone out there, if you see someone that's doing something that's not right, please stop them. I saw people that started this movement begging people, please get out the street. They're asking you, they're giving you a chance, get out the street. And these people, they wouldn't move. So I want to reiterate some of the words that they were saying as far as the original people that put this together. Big kudos. I like what you guys are doing. Keep the community involved. Keep doing the things you're doing. But for those of you who want to come out there, and destroy our city, my city, your city. We're not gonna have that guy. That's not, that's not who we are. That's not who we are. Thank you guys. Any questions, yes. What would you say to those people who weren't listening to the people that were asking them to get out of the road? What, what would you say to those people that are saying that they're there for a protest 
they're not following the law? I would tell them there's many ways to get things accomplished. And by being arrested, you can't do anything from the jailhouse. So comply and do the right things. Any other questions? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. And thank you for making time to be with us today. We appreciate your service to our community. Without you, we couldn't communicate with the, the, the citizens and the constituents that we're all blessed to serve. So thank you and ask for God's blessing on you and our wonderful community and country right now. Thank you and you'll have a good evening. Do you all have any other questions before we wrap it up? All right. And also thank you to um, State Police. They also came out and helped us tonight. So uh, we appreciate their work. And uh, have a good night. Thanks. Do you want to get that? Is that close enough? you want to sit on the podium? Is that good enough? Yeah. All right. Glad you got it.